Hey guys, Ronnie here from Early Bird Farms, and today we out here planting our Dunstan chestnut trees. Um, if you recall, if you hadn't been following the channel long, these are uh, chestnuts that I started uh, from seed last March. They were about two, uh, one to two foot tall. Uh, after the first growing season, I grew them in bags, and uh, and the reason why I grew them in bags is so that the uh, roots would air prune and they wouldn't get. Um, you know they wouldn't get root bound so uh today we're out here planting them uh i got already got five holes dug if you can see behind me here you can see stuff laid out and then the tractor at the end um i'm down here at this end because the tractor's going through a region and i didn't want to get close to it because it's real loud but i want to show you a couple things i want to show you uh planting these dunston chestnut trees and i also want to show you uh, these tree tubes that we're using. All right, so here is the chestnut trees uh, grew in these uh, grow bags. I ordered these bags off Amazon. Um, if you're really interested, I'll throw a link uh, down below if you want to get them. Um, I'm using three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe as my stake. Um, from the research I read and uh, a guy that I'm friends with that lives close by, this is what he uses. And you want these tubes to flex. You don't want them to be st still. Um, if if they don't flex, the uh, the trunk of the tree uh, doesn't flex and bend. And uh, if it doesn't do that, it'll make the tree real floppy. The way I understand it, it's kind of like exercising. If you don't exercise your muscles, your muscles won't get strong. If the tree is not bending back and forth, the trunk won't get strong. That that creates. Uh, strength in the tree tr in the tree trunk so that's why i'm using pvc pipe i bought a bundle of 10 pvc pipes uh they're 10 foot long three quarter inch in diameter and i cut them in half so i got them five foot tall it leaves about an inch uh, a little bit above once i drive it all the way in the ground above the uh above the um zip tie so let's show you the tree tubes. these are the tree tubes i'm using these are a solid tube they're rolled on top here they come bundled together. Uh, there's like three, four, maybe five that's inside here. They make different sizes uh, and they make the different sizes so they can put them inside each other uh, when they ship them. Uh, this has, I actually got it upside down wrong. This has vent holes in it. You see that vent hole right there? The vent holes go towards the top. This allows some, uh, some air flow in here and uh this these tree tubes are great because it creates a greenhouse effect which causes the uh the uh, trees to grow faster it also uh condensates on the uh, walls and that condensation strip drips down the tube and keeps the uh the trees uh moist down there right there at the base of it and uh another big thing is it protects it from from uh rabbits uh from coming rabbits like to come gnaw on the bark of uh, young trees and if they if they go around it, they'll es essentially kill the tree um, They get in the cambium layer and kill it and uh, same thing with mice and then also deer deer's a big problem with these and uh, These help with uh, keeping deer off of it Once the trees reach the top of the tube the deer may try to climb up the tube or get on their hind legs to eat the fresh leaves so uh we've already had we've already lost one fruit tree in our orchard up there at the house due to uh a buck coming rubbing the uh fruit tree in half so it's very important for us especially at the back of my property here um putting these tubes on here and these are miracle tree tubes uh these are one piece so they're uh some of them the same company makes another tree tube that is uh in other words it opens up um, that makes it easier for cleaning, but from what I gather from a few friends on YouTube and other other places uh, Joy at my slice of heaven. He says they're more aggravating than they are useful. So he likes the one piece like these uh, The guy down the road that I'm friends with just so happened to told me to get these so They also because they're opaque you can see my finger. They're not clear. They're opaque. They block some of the Sun's rays um and keeps the young trees uh, from getting sun scald. So young trees are susceptible to that, especially uh, like my pawpaw trees, they especially are susceptible to sun scald. 
and a, a lot of fruit trees are and a lot of places will paint them in the winter time with a watered down latex exterior paint and paint the tree trunk to prevent them from getting sun scald. Uh, I hadn't gotten into that yet, but uh, here is the zip ties that come on it. They uh, self-release zip ties. Um, I've used the auger to dig a hole. The last two years I've planted a cover crop out here. Uh, this was actually a food plot that I planted for the deer. But um, after I planted this and mowed it a couple of seasons, I can tell a big difference in the soil on top, the first two or three inches. And I do have these close to, you see some trees. This white oak right here will be staying. This white oak and this dogwood will not be staying. That dogwood pretty much is dead. And uh, I'll be coming thinning a lot of this stuff out here in the next few weeks. So this tree is pretty close to this white oak, but the way my spacing worked out, it just happened to be where it was. Um, I've released that white oak by cutting a lot of the underbrush around it. That was, that white oak right there looked like that. Uh, last year and what I mean by releasing I mean cutting the small trees out from around it that was there was trees that was growed up close to the canopy so uh, I got them out of the way and once I plant once I'll be clearing all this out again and once I do that I'll be planting some probably some plums uh, like some Chickasaw plums or American plums around here to create like a thicket on this edge right here and then I'll have a deer stand on that other side and there'll be a food plot in there so that's the plan eventually i want to put a row of these chestnut trees down that back side too and here's the last one and i'll walk by the corner and show you that what i'm talking about see how that row goes on down through there so i'll probably come and put a another chestnut about right here in line with them and then we'll go down that way once we get those trees cut out of there so that's the plan and then we got to do the same thing you see i've marked this white oak to keep because it's a pretty got a pretty uh, straight trunk but a lot of this will be coming out and then we're going to plant all kind of wildlife trees in here uh, Longleaf pines, we'll, we'll pl plant little clusters of trees there where apple trees, persimmon trees, uh, hard mast and soft mast trees everywhere. And then right down the middle will be a food plot. So we'll have thickets and feeder trees. Should make a good wildlife plot. This is what we're using to uh, drill our holes with. I got a video coming out of me uh, checking the uh, the fluid there on how to do it you can see where i checked it it was running down so it was good so here's what it looks like once we get a tree tube on you can see how the stake is just above the zip tie so i'm gonna give you a shot of what it looks like back that way uh this is like i said this is at the far end of my property here so let's show you how the trees are gonna line up and you can see the uh the tractor in the in the distance here Hey guys, thanks for stopping by today. Hit that subscribe button right here. We'd love to have you stick around. Also, check out one of these two videos down below. I'm sure you'll like it as well. Thank you for stopping by Early Bird Farms SC, where the SC stands for South Carolina. We'll see you next time.